This term, nutrition for mental health, has broad implications. One might assume it is merely about nutrients such as vitamins and minerals important for optimal brain functioning. While nutrients themselves are quite important for cognitive processes, there's actually so much more to it. This video is an introduction to the conversation around nutrition for mental health. Many of the nuances will be expanded on and covered in future videos, so please subscribe and stay up to date with this exciting new area of study and clinical practice. Mental health is a broad term. It can include disorders such as depression, anxiety, substance use, post-traumatic stress, attention deficit hyperactivity, and so many more. Importantly, mental health also includes mental wellness rather than just the study of illness. The term nutrition is also quite broad. It includes food, but also dietary supplements, nutraceuticals, and other compounds that can be ingested and digested. Thus, the link between nutrition and mental health can take on various forms depending on the context. Here, I focus on mental health conditions with known links to nutritional status and eating behavior. Many of the early scientific studies linking nutrition to mental health came from associational studies linking various micronutrient deficiencies to a range of mental health conditions. For example, individuals using drugs and or alcohol present to hospital detoxes with a wide range of nutrient deficiencies including B vitamins, antioxidant vitamins A, C, and E, magnesium, iron, and more. Importantly, some nutrients such as copper and zinc can be elevated rather than deficient indicative of potential infection and certainly inflammation. Meanwhile, associational studies do not indicate if the micronutrient deficiencies are a cause or a consequence of the impairments in mental status. And of course, drug and alcohol use are both associated with altered eating behavior and gut function. Therefore, findings cannot be extrapolated to the general population. A growing body of research in the area of nutrition for mental health focuses on depression. Countless studies have shown that the Mediterranean diet has been associated with reductions in depressive symptoms. Recently, trials have been conducted using broad-spectrum micronutrient formulas for symptoms of depression, stress, and anxiety, with the majority of studies showing positive effects. For example, B vitamin supplementation has been shown to benefit stress management in at-risk populations. It has also been suggested that long-term consumption of micronutrients for the treatment of psychiatric symptoms is safe without many reports of clinically significant adverse effects. Efforts to improve diets and include supplementation should be routine in clinical mental health care, but it is not yet. A recent meta-analysis showed that dietary interventions using food hold promise as a novel intervention for reducing depressive symptoms across multiple groups in the population. Importantly, studies using food-based interventions differ from dietary supplement studies in several ways. One obvious difference is that changing the way people eat is much more difficult than adding a daily pill. Another example is that food has profound implications for gut bacteria, which will be discussed in more detail in future videos. There's so much more to it than food and nutrients. The conversation must go beyond the biochemical reductionistic approach. For example, how we think about food also falls under the domain of nutrition for mental health. If an individual spends 60% of their day stressing out about food and their body, it'll certainly impact mental health and overall quality of life. Another example is the recent discovery of the gastrointestinal tract as the second brain, which has broad implications for the immune system and therefore all body systems. The psychology of eating, the concept of eating to feed microbes inside of us. What an exciting time to translate this data into behaviors that can actually help people improve the quality of their lives. To summarize, there's a biological lens for nutrition for mental health related to nutrients and physiological processes connected to the brain. This is sometimes referred to as nutritional psychiatry. There's a psychological lens related to body image, disordered eating, and cognitive processes around food choices. This is sometimes referred to as nutritional psychology. There's also a sociocultural lens that connects food to the human experience, situated in family dynamics, communities, and the broader ecological context. This is sometimes referred to as the social determinants of health. It is critical to merge all these views and employ a biopsychosocial perspective to the conversation of nutrition for mental health. The conversation is really just beginning. Be here for it.